Hello guys, my name is Armin. In today's video, learning new for Mark Connect, we're gonna take a look at the ribbon in Navisworks. We're gonna review the settings for new for Mark Connect, which is the most important part on navigation, display, and clash detection. Basically, you are telling now new for Mark Connect on how to group and how to send your clashes to the end user. Also, we're gonna go through the grouping feature in new for Mark Connect. We're gonna review how to sync the clashes or results between the two platforms, which is gonna be new for Mark Connect and Navisworks. And also, I'm gonna show you how to scan the unlinked issues, which is gonna be the most important part and New Format Connect is gonna let you know that you are missing some links between the clashes or the model so you can go back and double check. If you like the content, please make sure to subscribe and leave a like and let's jump into New Format Connect. Okay, so right now we are in Navisworks. Uh, we're gonna go through the ribbon, we're gonna review the login or add in for new for mark connect and previous videos you guys can go back and take a look at it we went through the whole uh, cloud-based web editor uh, we set up the model we did the settings and everything is good to go over there right here we are going through the actual tab inside our navis model so when you basically install it uh, with the integration it comes in with these tab uh, when you go on you'll be able to see all of these icons right here so we're gonna go through one by one explain what it is and let's just start from the end which is the most important one so if you come right here and click on settings it's gonna open up another box for you this is gonna be the main settings of grouping your clashes sending into the clash view and much more so this is kind of the core of what you need to uh, fix so I'm gonna go through every single item explain exactly what it is and you guys can uh, basically uh, pick and choose based on what you want to send what you want to show to the team so the first tab which called navigation so the first one right here it says automatically execute the following action so display clash pinpoint so all the issues created within with it with the clashes to issues command will expose their clash pinpoint so if you have this on it basically shows a, a, a like a sphere or pinpoint of the location that these clash exist so when you go to the elements visibility it do nothing means uh, just the default setting so it's not gonna do anything it's not gonna hide it's not gonna show any elements um, it's not gonna isolate it's not gonna do so whatever this the, the condition of that clash is is gonna show it the way it is so show height saved elements so commonly used when uh, retrieving issues that were created either from the created issue or from the views to issue command so let's say if you have some some elements that are hidden so if you want to keep all of those viewpoints and save it in or all the clashes let's say you remove the slab you remove the walls and you want to show the clashes you need to click this one so basically it's gonna sh it's gonna hide and show whatever element is saved and it's gonna send it that way an isolate element it's basically uh, this is when you want to only um, isolate the item so this is gonna use the clash detective clash detective box so when retrieving issue that we're creating from the clashes to issue command then uh, with the clash detective so we're gonna go through those but if you so this one when you send it in it's gonna isolate the elements so basically it's gonna just show like a hidden option in a clash detective nothing is gonna be over there so this one right here the next one which is the uh, force section box around related elements so by default basically always used so by default is used if you want to force it basically put um, a section box in navis so basically if you do this you always see your uh, section box is uh, turned on automatically in navis and put all of those clashes that you have within the group inside the box so it's not going to use the plane it's basically just using the box and uh, kind of isolate each of those 
and then the camera location so the safe camera is always used uh, that you have in the navis but you can kind of force a zoom to it so this one changes the view position to fit the extent of the element so previously phased saved in the issues and found in the current model so it's just want to make sure that all of those issues are displayed on the screen so if you have these forced zoom it basically no matter what type of camera or view you saved um, in your navis it basically pushes the camera to zoom on the actual clash um, so what I would recommend here I always have this one on I just want to do nothing so I just want to do all of these settings in my navis in terms of hiding um, isolating and stuff like that so I just leave this one as do nothing but I keep these two on four so basically put them on this box and also zoom the camera on the clash but again if you guys want to do all of these items it's up to you is just basically what I do so the next one is gonna be the display so the first one uh, display clash spheres as a billboards instead of the spheres so it means just just the, the way that it's gonna show it right it's just gonna put a sphere on top of the clash we'll look at it later on when we're going through the clash and then the next one it says display pinpoints by default so instead of just a sphere you just put it like a pinpoint um, so these are refreshed each time items are edited or refreshed right so it's basically these locations and then it allows the user to update the issue that are working on um, at the same time and then kind of quickly navigation from issues to view to another is going to update the location of the new issues and it's going to kind of help you help help you identify where the new updates or the new issues are so the next one which is the view state um, it's really important also they have two if I go on top of this one and this one uh, they have a little bit explanation so um, so this one kind of determines whether hidden elements and section box are kept when creating or updating the viewpoint and then this one also uh, determines if hidden elements and section boxes place are kept when publishing a clash so basically they when you check these two boxes it's gonna save all the state that you have in your navis so whatever you created based on your viewpoints is gonna keep it over here when you're creating your clash groups whatever the view and the state of the view is for that clash is gonna use it so I would I would recommend check it if you are working more in Navis so if you remember in the navigation we said do nothing and right here we're gonna tell them follow whatever I told you in Navis so this one is basically we are telling him that uh, all the elements the boxes the planes whatever I set up in Navis just follow it over there so this is my preference um, or the practices that I do if I use no format connect but again it just goes back how you guys uh, set up your clashes sending your clashes and much more the last option which is gonna be the clashes to issues this is a little bit kind of uh, confusing they have two options so let's just start from the bottom one which is easier to understand um, so this one basically allows to publish all the information is a viewpoint clash pinpoints and whatnot right so when you have these options selected um, you'll be notified when like they have a, a warning icon goes on top of the group so if the group is oversized and means it has more than 100 clashes you'll be identified you'll be notified that okay this group has been identified more than 100 clashes before publish what do you want to do you want to create another group and put them in or you want to ignore so just gonna count all 200 for that reason I never use it I just always use the top one uh, so this one allows you to publish only the first clash in the group uh, so the properties of the first clash will be published and then by default this option is selected so if you don't do anything so this option is selected and then uh, 
for, for, for everything more than 100 clashes. You can change this value by entering a new value between 1 to uh, 100. So the numbers are 1 to 100 that you can put over here. And then uh, group with more clashes than the threshold that you specified uh, will be published with only the group's viewpoints and the first class point. So they can be identified by the camera icon, so it's just going to put the icon on top of it. Uh, what I would recommend you to do is, so this one, when you select this one, it's going to override this. This is by default. So what I'm telling him, I want you to put 10 clashes in each group. So it's going to give me more groups, but it's more focused on the clashes and on the areas. Um, again, you guys can put 100 here, which is the maximum, or you want to put 1 which is the minimum um, and then if you go on this kind of icon it says only the first clash in the group will be published the issue so what does that mean is it basically if let's say you have I'm gonna tell them put me 10 clashes uh, it's gonna be let's say three pipes hitting each other and creating 10 clashes it only give me a picture or an image of the first one um, so which doesn't matter to me to be honest I just wanted to have the clashes that are close to each other to be grouped in more focused area and that's going to be easier to see the items in the same uh, location so these are basically um, all the settings that I would do uh, but again it's just going to go back uh, how would you guys uh, prefer to follow this and then what's going to apply to your workflow and if you're not happy with any of this all the time you can hit reset it's just going to go back everything to the default settings for these um, basically box that is open up for the Navis work setting clashes and groups so this is basically what I have over here let's just go through this item so the first one right here is going to be the group clash um, so this one it comes from the clash te uh, clash detection box so I created these three clashes with the groups uh, when you create the clashes over there like the clash tests it basically give, bring it over here and it's going to tell you how would you like to uh, group it I personally create sets and do all the grouping and everything manually in Navis World because I have more um, kind of let's say freedom and then go into more details different by the area by the zones the reason that I'm not using this is you only have these options right so basically telling you you're gonna group by level and then then you're gonna group by intersection grid intersection or selection a selection B assigned to approved by status so it just it's just limited and is not going to serve the purpose for the clash detection um, issues I would not use this myself but um, if somebody wants to do it let's say first uh, selection by a which is going to be this one is going to select it by the electrical one and then it's going to go to by the grid intersection which is going to be all the clashes that I let's say close to each grid line to just put all of them in one group and it's gonna and then when you check these it's gonna keep all of the existing groups and you'll be able to kind of use this um, kind of moving forward and, and each one each, each one of your um, basically clashes that you want so what I would recommend um, is just go through it see if it's gonna help you out if not you can kind of go back uh, you know creating the clashes it clash um, you know your sets selection sets and then creating your groups manually um, so but you have this option over here I think this is great uh, that it can kind of make it a little bit faster for you and it's gonna do all of those grouping um, clashes to issues we're gonna have a dedicated video for this one so let's just go to seeing clashes to issues so what basically um, new format connect does a bit uh, it's in communication with the Navis so when all the clashes sent to new format connect from Navis it's possible to update the status of the clashes between the two platform uh, with one click which is this one so when you click this one uh, Navis work will import the status from new format connect so basically uh, when you 
uh, send the clashes over here from the let's say first you run a clash you send everything to new format connect and then after that you go through a bunch of the clashes you click review approved and whatnot and you simply let's say I have all of these and I kind of went through all of them some of them have been approved some of them have been reviewed I just click on this one and say sync and when you hit sync it basically update the result clashes in new format connect it closes some of them that are approved or resolved whatever is reviewed is going to be addressed as a review so this is going to be the kind of the second or third or you know any other pass that you go after the first publish so first you guys publish your clashes and then after that's done then you'll be able to sync it for just here so you can kind of this one it kind of help you talk between the two platform you know sending the status back and forth or if you want to close some stuff in your now in your new format connect on a web app you can bring it here you can select them and just send those stuff back sync them back to your navis and it's gonna close most stuff it's a it's a great tool to just kind of talk between the two platforms um, so you can close here sync to the navis or you can update over here show it here so it just basically it's a it's a very very good tool to um, use uh, between the two platforms so the next one is the scan unlinked issues so if there is any clashes that are not linked so it's gonna scan basically so this is a new um, the new uh, kind of feature that's been added because it didn't have the scan unlinked issues so in order to sync clash status work so what I'm what I mean by that is because we want to make sure all the status are, are synced and then they read each other this one kind of scans so it's gonna search for all the issues across the clash test that you're created to make sure everything is synced um, everything is linked so they can be synced later on because if they are not then you are gonna miss some of the clashes so what I would recommend should be your basically kind of a, a workflow you always hear you let's say like this one you hit scan is gonna scan and it's gonna tell you if something has been unlinked or yes or no let's just try the other one as well so I'm gonna try this one I'm gonna scan so all of my clashes are linked so when I feel good then I can come here and say okay you know sync this send these back so it's basically syncing all of these from Navis to the BIM track so I can kind of read them so these two kind of work uh, together uh, show and hide clashes and views so if you create some views or if you get clashes again that we talked about gonna put some pinpoint over here or the spheres so basically what you're gonna do you're gonna if you want to see all of those clashes or no you don't want to see any of them so you can kind of turn them on and off um, in a nutshell I think the most important part for this settings would be this one she's gonna tell you how to navigate how to display your clashes and how to group them this is basically what you are setting up here and after you're satisfied with this if you're good you can create your uh, groups if not you can use your sets um, you are sending the clashes to uh, basically new format connect from your clash detection box and then you can sync between two platform and just once in a while try to scan it for unlinked issues so these are the most important items over here that you guys can use in your clash detection process hope that you guys enjoyed today's video if you like the content please make sure to subscribe and leave a like and I will see you guys in the next video thank you for watching Thank you.